first test print of calibration object on sugar with no extrusion. See if we can get a close up on the interweave action here. So as you can probably tell, I have a uh, pin in my inkjet that is dead. That's why we got these line streaks going through it. It is printing properly on the sugar. I'm happy about that. Hopefully we can lay enough of the uh, ink down to solidify some of it. This sugar does not have any of the binder experiments. It's just straight sugar, no extra powdering. This is basically making sure that the um, bed is sufficiently close to the head after leveling for it to be able to take ink. Now, as you can tell, it makes a pass, it makes a very small uh, movement, and then comes back from that pass that way we can get a little bit of overfill. So this is the print head controller here. This is handling all of the uh, movement of the print head uh, back and forth as it does its scan. And this black cable here is actually uh, 12 volt power RX and TX serial and 5 volt power and ground. We got one motor controller and up here we have a ink shield which is driving a HP be still for a second HP CN uh, it's the industrial one that goes with an ink shield anyway uh, almost done with the first layer of the calibration object and over here we have my little visualization screen kinda hard to tell on the phone but there's a little user interface going on there. And of course, there we go. So it tells you the current access, everything is, and gives you an idea of what layer it's printing. And let's see. And we, that is the part bin. And here is the feed bin. And that is powered by stepper motors. More handheld shaky cam. So the carriage it's running is salvaged from uh, an old HP multifunction printer. The electronics you see on the print head are not in use except for the optical encoders, which go for the um, optical encoder line right there. And uh, the DC motor and optical encoder was what we salvaged, and the carriage was what I salvaged from the HP unit. And see there, a nice print of the first layer. So it's going to work on the second layer now, and succeeding passes. I chose this calibration object because there is a uh, gradient in this corner that will be rendered for, by succeeding passes, so I can determine the fragility of the object whenever I take it out by what part of that gradient breaks and I'll have a general idea of um, how thick to make my layers to be able to fully bind the powder or at least with this particular recipe alright that's uh, enough for now and I will speak about Brundlefab later